In a previous webinar, I provided a whirlwind tour of the new OpenDetect ODBind Python module. Today I want to look at a potential application of the module, calculating seismic attributes. I will be using the latest OpenDetect free release, 7.0.4, and the base Python environment available through the OpenDetect installer. OpenDetect Pro and the ODML machine learning Python environments would work just as well. In the demo, I will calculate a few simple complex trace attributes, showing code examples for both calculation on an in-memory volume and also by iterating over inlines. This demo is running in a Jupyter Lab session launched from the OpenDetect user interface. As a result, the location of the ODBind module is automatically present on the Python path and the module can be imported directly. The input data for the demo is the dip steered median filtered volume of the F3 demo 2023 project. To access the data, I first create a survey class instance and then a seismic 3D class instance. The seismic 3D object has a variety of methods and attributes for working with 3D seismic data. Shown here is just the info method and the volume attribute. The info method provides some basic data for the associated seismic volume. The volume attribute can be indexed to load a subvolume into memory. In this case, none slices are used for the inline, crossline and Z range to load the entire volume of around about 600,000 traces into the vol variable. Now vol is an X-array data set. In 7.04, we have transitioned to using X-Array datasets as the default in-memory seismic format. All attributes or methods that produce seismic data now provide results as X-Array datasets. The first step in this attribute calculation workflow is to standardize the data. A nice feature of X-Array datasets is they work well with NumPy, as you can see in this simple data scaling operation. Also, because X-Array datasets embed extra metadata about the seismic data, it is easy to visualize results in a nicely annotated plot, as shown here. The instantaneous attributes are calculated from the Hilbert transform of the input seismic data. Here we use the Hilbert function of the SciPy signal module to do the transform, and NumPy functions to do the calculation. The newly calculated attributes are saved back into the X-Array dataset as new data arrays. Displaying the results is then very simple. Finally, the results are saved back to the OpenDTEC survey. This is the most time consuming part of the process, taking about half of the just under one minute used by the entire calculation. The code is creating a new multi-attribute seismic volume in CBVS format that contains the scaled input data, the instantaneous amplitude, instantaneous phase, and the quadrature or 90 degree phase rotated data. Let's now have a quick look at the, the results inside OpenDTEC. The new seismic volume is a standard CBVS format volume and can be displayed or manipulated within OpenDetect like any other seismic volume. Here we load all the components onto an inline slice and use the page up, page down keys to cycle through them. Loading an entire seismic volume into memory to compute a seismic attribute may not be feasible depending on the RAM available and the size of the target data. In those circumstances, the solution is to iterate over subvolumes or inline slices. This next code cell shows the same attribute calculation, but this time by iterating over inlines. To provide a bit more feedback, we've added a progress bar module to time the loop. For the F3 demo data set, the inline iteration to calculate and save the results back to OpenDetect takes just under a minute, which is about the same overall time as for the volume in memory workflow. Let's fast forward through the remaining time 
and have a quick look at the results inside OpenDTEC. Nothing too surprising here. Load the volume for an inline slice and cycle through the results. Now calculating these specific attributes using the ODBind module in itself isn't a significant result given the OpenDTEC attribute engine already includes the instantaneous attribute. However, the basic workflow shown here can be easily extended for your more challenging use cases. Thanks for watching. We hope that what you've seen here serves as inspiration for your own more complex and interesting uses for the ODBind module.